Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. It is Friday, which means it is Attic Find Friday, my favorite day of the week, and hopefully yours too. Remember, tomorrow I am on Hobby Hotline, 11 a.m. I'll share that out when it comes out. If you want to pop in, chat, uh, it's live, so the things that you chat will maybe end up on screen. Uh, so it should be fun. That's with Danny Black and somebody else. I don't remember who off the top of my head, but it should be fun. That uh, starts at 11. The live link is available at 10.30 usually, I think. Uh, and then my new series comes out this Sunday. I'm excited for that. I'm planning for Sunday. We'll see how it goes. I try not to overdo it. I don't want to burn myself out. So this story comes to us from 2018. Uh, in April of 2018, former NFL player Evan Mathis sold a PSA 9 1952 Mickey Mantle. I didn't, I didn't have to put my microphone up here. <laughs> 1952 Mickey Mantle for $2.88 million, so just shy of $3 million. And that was obviously big news at the time. It was the second highest sports card sale of all time as of 2018. Um, just behind the Hannes Wagner T206 card, which had sold for a little over $3 million not long before that. So obviously things have changed because since then an SGC 9.5 mantle sold for $12.6 million, which is now the highest priced card ever. Uh, but this mantle sold for 2.88. So, uh, at that time, because it was in the newspapers and the magazines and things, a man, a 76-year-old man out of New Jersey, only known by his first name of John, said, hey, that's got to be wrong. They must have, this must be a misprint. And the next day, he thought he would find a correction in the newspaper, and uh, there wasn't the next day. So he said, I'm going to go down into my basement and look at my cards from my childhood and see what I had. And so he went down and he looked, and all of his cards were from the from like the 1951-52 era. There was absolutely nothing after 1952. And he and his brother, I think, uh, went by Ed. It was his first name. Again, they they didn't give last names smartly, by the way. Um, and by the way, would you want your name known publicly if you sold millions of dollars worth of cards? Let me know in comments. I want to know. I don't think I would. I'd, I'd want to be private because I wouldn't want people hitting me up for money. So he went down into his basement. Now his collection, he and his brother had collected as kids and his, their father had been a collector of stamps and postcards and coins. And so he was very careful with his collection. He taught them to be very careful with their collection too. And where a lot of young kids who collected cards in the 50s would put them in their bike spokes, they would play with them. These guys didn't. They just kept them nice and in good, good condition, even though there weren't sleeves or top loaders at that time. They kept them nice in boxes. And um, so they stopped collecting and the box of their cards just sat in a, in a box in their attic, their mother's attic, for 60 years, roughly. So from the mid-1950s, from the time that they stopped collecting, went up into their, their mother's attic. And uh, because she stayed in the house all that time until her death in 2006, I think, nothing ever happened to the carts. Now, the most common story from the 50s and 60s, same thing that happened to my father, when he went off to college in 1969, his mother threw away all of his cards. And that's a very, very common story. All those Mickey Mantles, all those Jackie Robinsons, all those superstars, Carl Yastrzemski cards, went in the garbage. And that's why vintage cards are so valuable now. Not because they're scarce, but because uh, a lot of people, they're a lot more scarce than modern cards, for sure. And that's a big part of it because so many got thrown away. But a lot of people have that sentimentality, that nostalgia about the things that they collected as a child and they want to get back into it. And uh, so they got very lucky when their mother passed away years before, they took that box that was in her attic and they moved it into John's basement. And where he and his brother had shared the collection at the time in the 1950s, it had been combined and they really didn't know whose was whose. 
But they went down and they started looking and they had a bunch of 1952 Topps Mickey Mantles, five to be exact. So they called Heritage Auctions, which is where the, the other one had sold the day before, and Heritage flew out and they looked at them and they were shocked at the condition of these cards. There were also four Jackie Robinsons from 1952 Topps. We'll go through some more too here in a minute, but a uh, pretty staggering find for these guys. Um, John said that in around 1980, he was talking to a dealer that he knew, a card dealer, and he told the dealer what he had, what he felt like he had from the 1950s, and that dealer, sight unseen, offered them $8,000 cash for the cards, right then and there. Had, was not able to see them, just said, I'll give you $8,000 for them. And it made me wonder, could that have been Mr. Mint? I don't know. It might have been a little too early for Mr. Mint, but uh, he, he thought it was 1980-ish. So John at the time said, nah, I, I don't, I don't want to sell them to a dealer because dealers are going to want to make a big profit off of it. And so he just left it in his mother's attic for years and then in his basement. Luckily, his basement never flooded. And so when he went down there in 2018, he found a, a several hundred 1950s cards, early 50s cards. So Heritage actually took the collection of cards and flew them out to PSA in California and hand delivered them because they knew, the how, they knew the value. They didn't want to ship them in the mail. Smart, I would do the same thing I hope you would too. If I found five Mickey Mantles and five, four Jackie Robinsons from 1952, I too would invest a little money to make sure they got there safely or as safe as possible. So after grading, 26 of their cards sold in July of 2018, totaling $384,000. Uh, one of them was a PSA 7.5 mantle, which sold for $200,000. A PSA 5 mantle sold for $72,000. The best one, though, was a PSA 8.5. Now, Evan Mathis's was a 9, and they looked at Evan Mathis's and they looked at their best one, and they thought it would match. Came up pretty close, 8.5 versus Mathis's 9. Uh, the interesting thing is that they grew up in Hartford, Connecticut, and, and we'll get into more of these sales in a minute, but I, I forgot about this little detail here. They, the boys, John and Ed, grew up in Hartford, Connecticut, and they bought the packs for the gum. It wasn't for the baseball cards, which is such a foreign concept to people of my age. We didn't, we, we chewed the gum, of course, back in the 80s and 90s, but we were buying them for the baseball cards. Uh, and they would trade their Red Sox cards for their beloved Yankees players, and that's how they got so many mantles. They didn't have a ton of cards, so they certainly weren't buying a ton of packs over those couple of years. They were doing a lot of trades. All right, so let's talk about the highlights here. The highlights, 1948 Leaf Jackie Robinson, PSA 6. 1948 Leaf Warren Spahn, PSA 8. 1951 Bowman Mays, PSA 6.5. And then the, uh, the best one was a 52 Tops Campanella, PSA 9. Imagine having a PSA 9 that's 66 years old. It's, it's unfathomable to me. They also had a 52 Tops Maze that was a, a 7, a Jackie Robinson that was a 7.5, and then two 7s on the Jackie Robinson 52 Tops. Uh, they all told sold for well over a million dollars, of course. The Mantle 8.5 sold for 800 and $10,000. The eight sold for just 80000 I don't know why it went for so little. But uh, yeah, pretty awesome stuff. I love these stories. If you're new here, I do an Attic Find Friday. Every week, click that subscribe button and you'll get these stories. This one is a pretty short one. They've been getting up to like 12 to 15 minutes pretty regularly. But I wanted to do a, a vintage baseball one. I have probably 50 or more of these stories to go. Uh, maybe 40 or more of them. So there's a lot more. Make sure you're subscribed so you get these every week. And uh, I also do nearly daily content, sports card content. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you have a great weekend.